Okay, so this is uh, slightly unusual for me. I normally do technical demonstrations, but given that I've been traveling of late and I've got lots of different ideas and new learnings, I thought I would share what I've been doing from the lovely views that I have here in uh, Aberdeenshire. So normally I like to go and hide in my polytunnel and do some veg growing. And so you can join me there and I'll talk about some of the stuff that I've been up to. So I'm going to warn you, you're going to see a lot of dock leaves and weeds, but you'll also see some tomato plants as well, look. So I'm slowly getting those coming together. I've also got this lovely polytunnel, which is absolutely roasting. Not much greenery. I have got a few things growing, but let's have a chat about what I've been up to. So I've recently been to three different events. The first event was through in Seattle for Build where I was lucky enough to go and join some of the product group and uh, wider teams to deliver a hackathon on Copilot Studio, which was, first of all, absolutely amazing to have so many people try and build stuff with the new capabilities that had just been launched at Build. But for me, the, the real highlight was just seeing the amount of effort that the product group put into the product over the six months up to the release date in May and then the, the sheer joy when they have completed their demonstrations and um, shown what they've been passionately working on for the last six months. I could see the huge relief from the people that had put that time and effort in and also the amount of work that goes into producing blog posts and, and demos. My, my role as a cloud solution architect at Microsoft is really to uh, help customers understand how they can build with the Power Platform, best practices, governance, and uh, I run hackathons and stuff like that with customers and long-term engagements, but also short-term engagements too. But nothing really beats a team effort, and that's very much what it felt like at Build, being part of that experience uh, and working together with so many people. Now, there were some key takeaways from Microsoft Build in terms of the new features that were released, uh, mainly acronyms, to be honest. We've got um, MCP, which is the Model Context Protocol, and we've also got the Agent to Agent, which is going to allow us to bring lots of different agents, not only into Copilot Studio, but uh, into other platforms too, because it's a standard that we're all adopting here. Um, so it's very exciting to think that whilst in preview we can bring in just... Copilot Studio agents into Copilot Studio will soon be able to bring in Foundry agents and other types of agents and really open up the, the capabilities of, of the product and build these multi-agent architectures. And it's something I've been playing about with and wanting to do videos on, but I just don't know at the moment what would be of interest, to be honest, to people that are watching because I'm working it out too, just like everyone else. <laughs> so I can do a basic agent to agent demo but um, it's really just to explain the basics until I get the grasp of, of how we use this and what the real value is albeit it's evident at the moment that agent to agent is going to allow you to share that workload for building those agents rather than relying on a single agent to do everything we're going to be able to build these subject matter expert agents that have their their tools and their knowledge and therefore you'll be able to bring them into other conversations with other agents and that's really where the, the power of all this comes into it rather than constantly building out the same capabilities we'll have these subject matter agents or sub subject matter expert agents and um, be able to share those capabilities and across different platforms as well remember this is not just a copilot studio feature this is a feature that features across all the different agent technologies out there. So the next bit of capability that really caught my attention is MCP and that's been described as the USB for agents. Again it's not something that's exclusive to Copilot Studio, it's across all agent frameworks and the exciting thing, I'm going to see lots and lots of, of these that pop up, MCP servers. You could build your own but of course we could also 
take advantage of the manufacturers that are building these or software providers that are building these MCP servers and instantly bring in their capability into our agents and start talking to their APIs. So I would say MCP, Model Context Protocol, be aware of it. We're still going to be building custom connectors in Copilot Studio, but MCP is going to make it a lot easier for you to access all of those lovely APIs using natural language, talking to those APIs. And then finally, to complete the TLA jackpot, we've also got CUA, or CUA, Computer Use Agents, and that's a really exciting thing for those that are doing RPA at the moment. CUA, because it is using a language model, multimodal, CUA is able to replicate an end user. So if you're thinking about legacy applications, RPA traditionally is built as a, a script that will run an application and type data in and capture data, etc. It's for those legacy systems with APIs. CUA is going to be the equivalent, but using large language models, the multimodal capability, it will take screenshots of your machine. It will then click round that screen and if the application changes or a notifi notification pops up on screen, Kua will be able to make a decision based on instructions. Presumably you'll be able to put guardrails round, of course, what it can and can't do, but say there is an unusual pop-up as a system error, then in theory, going forward, we'll, you'll be able to bring in a human and make a decision about what to do next, but equally the large language model within its boundaries, within its instructions, could make a decision for you. And just simply OK that error message and continue with the process. So very exciting. Kua, that completes the TLAs. We've done our A2A, which is agent to agent, model context protocol, MCP, of course, and then finally Kua, or CUA. So I've also been incredibly lucky in addition to going to Seattle for build, I went to the European Collaboration Summit, which was in Dusseldorf. That was literally the week afterwards, and the event was fantastic. Met loads of great people that are sharing their content in the community. Met lots of familiar faces, had some laughs as well. And it's great coming together, to be honest, and just trying to get some of these understandings right in my head, as well as others. It's nice to be challenged and not just always assume that what I think is right is right. So that's a real advantage of coming together with a community and like-minded people who are exploring these new capabilities. And in addition to obviously being at the European Collaboration Summit, I then, two weeks later, was able to go through to Vienna for the European Power Platform Conference. Now, both of these events I spoke about Copilot Studio, did a live demo, built an agent in Copilot Studio to demonstrate the three pillars of retrieval, task and autonomous. And whilst Dusseldorf went to plan within the 45 minute slot, the demo during EPPC didn't go quite as planned, but I had an hour and I also was able to dig out some of my additional demos. I was prepared. So the recent video that I did on producing the RFI, Request for Information, I had that, I demoed it live and it worked, which was fantastic. So again it's very much about me trying to share what I've learned and also be challenged by others, answer questions and just engage with people and it's thoroughly rewarding and something that I never expected in a million years, four or five years ago when I started doing my YouTubing that I'd be able to reach so many people and help them with their careers and with their understanding of this ever-evolving technology. So here I am on a trampoline which I don't do very often because I've got a bit of a dodgy ticker and I don't want to end up on the ground being shocked by my ICD. But one of the key moments I took away from all these sessions across all these three different venues was how accessible pro code is becoming because of AI. And that was made even more evident during the keynote at EPPC because there is a new tool or a new capability being released in Private Preview, I believe, which is bring your own code. So using the Power Platform guardrails and deploying pro code into the safety net of Power Platform. So we all build apps and automations and agents in low code, but there was a slight hint that maybe apps in the future might be built using pro code. So my key takeaway really is if you're not using AI to experiment with code, go and have a, a play with GitHub Copilot in VS Code. 
I've built a few apps, one for my daughter, which I talked about on LinkedIn, and also my YouTube quiz app, which I have published on my blog at demobird365.com forward slash YouTube, where you can take quizzes and download PDFs. I couldn't have built that without the help of AI, and this stuff I find incredibly fascinating. Now, of course, I've been incredibly busy due to traveling, and I've not done many videos. Um, I've also been involved in my own community, which I started at the beginning of January, a new venture. I thought I'd see if I could engage with people behind closed doors. Would anyone be willing to come and join me and listen to me? And I've been doing fortnightly calls now for almost six months. And I met one of my community members at Vienna, which was, again, an amazing experience to think that I've connected with someone both online, but now also in person and for me community is very much a big part of what I do if it wasn't for community I wouldn't have had the opportunities to get a job at Microsoft for instance because previous to that I worked at a council I had a nine to five job I didn't really do much other than attending work and coming home and of course for those that know me I'm not very good at darts as you can see but uh Oh my goodness, not very good at all, hence the foam back. But I like to share, and if it wasn't for that, and if it wasn't for my shock of having a cardiac arrest just five years ago, I'd probably still be working in the council and probably still doing the same thing that I've always done, which was working in IT, but doing a job that I didn't really enjoy. So my recommendation to everyone, of course, is to look into large language models, to understand AI, to have a play, to, to learn. Don't feel afraid. Go and help someone out in a forum. Go and write a blog post. You never know where you're going to reach in the world. Certainly, I never expected it when I kick things off. Try darts. Put yourself in an uncomfortable place. And in my case, an uncomfortable place is trying to play darts. And quite clearly, I'm not very good, but I'll get there with a bit of practice, just like I practice with Power Automate. And if you're uh, watching this video, and this is the first video you've ever watched of mine, remember, I'm Demo, Demo Bar 365. I've got about 180 videos now on automation and low code and power platform, some on power apps, several videos on AI. I've been investigating and playing around with AI and demonstrating what's possible for some time. And of course, now I'm exploring Copilot Studio and thinking about, should I even throw a bit more pro code into the mix? Because like I said, AI is making this a lot, a lot more accessible for us. And as long as you've got that mindset, understand architecture, the importance of data, then I really feel it's important to experiment and learn. That aside, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm not very good at calling that out in my videos. Maybe that's why my channel yet hasn't exploded. But one day I'll keep going. I enjoy the comments. Make sure you do leave some comments. And I enjoy, of course, meeting people in person. So if you do ever see me at an event, I am a very friendly guy. I'm quite happy to say hello and say hello to as many people as possible. And as, as always, thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.